G'day, I'm Ash, and I'm incredibly humbled to be in front of you today as yesterday we reached a milestone that I've been looking forward to for a while now. In fact, you guys did more than that. I went to bed with 28,800 subscribers thinking by, you know, January 1st, I wouldn't reach 30,000. Yet here I am today speaking to you, incredibly humbled to have nearly 32,000 subscribers and we're growing incredibly fast and I think that's fantastic. And I hope you've all been enjoying the content this year, 250 plus videos this year alone. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart and we'll get stuck into the content. This is the EBR 1954, it's a French armoured car. Interesting choice to make it a event vehicle, although with being rank 3 but only 4.3, I suppose that this might be subject to change. Why? This vehicle is incredibly good. Traction is a little bit underwhelming, it is a little heavier than what you'd expect it to be, but the performance on road and off road is fantastic nevertheless. It does lack a little bit of traction in the high end revs. But again, it has got the same turret as the M4 FL10 and even has the same gun as some of the AMX vehicles with a 75 SA50 with 36 rounds of ammunition. Now it does come with four smoke grenades, it does have a 7.5mm machine gun as a coax and that's really all there is to say about the vehicle. No, wait, there is more. Let's have a look at the x-ray. The loader is also the driver if you have noticed here. And essentially, you can drive this thing backwards as fast as you can forwards, which is fantastic. Now I will say that these two metal wheels in the center, they're supposed to be raised up when used on road uh, conditions. That way it doesn't tear up the concrete or whatever the tarmac or whatever the road surface is. So when running on roads, these should technically lift up. That is not currently present in game. As you can see, the wheel arch is pretty full. So they would raise up and then you'd be able to drive. Now these two are both independently steering. So you basically get an insane steering circle with this particular vehicle. It's just fantastic to play. And I love this thing so much. It doesn't have much armor to speak of at all. I have bounced a few things on the front due to the fact that the the armor is such a slope. It is 40 millimeters and, and, and 40 millimeters is basically the best you would get. Let's go into modifications just real quick before we get into some gameplay. It does come with improved optics and support artillery, which is fantastic. Uh, essentially, this is an armor piercing cap shell with a penetration of 182 millimeters at 10 meters and up to 113 at zero degrees. Uh, so at 2000 meters, that's fantastic. We're not gonna speak of the HE at all. Stock round is more than capable, although I will say that this vehicle will probably go up in battle rating due to the fact that its performance is certainly going to affect the way that the vehicle performs. It is a monster. That is literally what it is. So if you really wanted EBRs, this is basically what most of low tier is gonna look like from now on. 4.3, I think this thing will go 4.7, and it might even go 5.0 even. So it could easily face those kind of vehicles because it's just an absolute dream to play. Jumping straight into the gameplay, I'm joined by Justin Plays TV and his friend Ref. These are two fantastic content creators. I'm going to leave them in the description down below. But essentially, we have progressed past the spawn point and now we're heading directly towards A. The aim is that we capture this point and we hold on to it and secure it with our fast mobility. Problem is, you know, R3 T20s are still a better vehicle. My most hated tank is still a menace to this particular vehicle. But still, this one is good. And it is utterly fantastic. Now, Justin has said he has spotted something. He's about to ping the location from where he can hear them. I don't know how this madman is hearing stuff. I've got a slight industrial deafness from working on you know, aviation-grade engines. So your turbines and your gas turbines, they're rather loud, especially in civilian sectors as an aircraft maintenance engineer. Um, as some of those Boeing 737s and so on and so forth. But that was past my time, and I don't necessarily do that anymore. But suffice to say that Justin's like, well, don't go around the corner, Ash. No, Ash, don't go around the corner. Well, it's a bit late now, I'm going to commit. We're full committing here. You never, never commit to this. And, well, this is my mistake right here. I didn't necessarily kill that KV-1 on first shot. He gets to turn the turret around. I'm sitting directly in front of him. My shell basically does nothing. Justin has to go and rescue me as I'm reloading. There he goes. He kills that particular KV-1. But that's not the only threat in the area. Now I'm going to sit on the cap circle and replenish my crew. Because crew in this vehicle is incredibly important. You can go backwards, you can go forwards, but if your vehicle isn't necessarily fully crewed or fully manned, it is an, a prime target. Now that KV-1 in front of me that I just saw, I don't know where he's necessarily coming. He's going to go ahead round the corner. Nope, he's going to go straight through. Now I've spotted him and he spotted me and we go straight through the lower plate. Justin calls out a couple of other tanks. He nails that Panzer four in the cap circle and there's another KV-1 at that point there too. We nail him. That is our third kill of the match. But that's not all. 
all of a sudden an R3 Tweed 10 20 comes rolling out of the bushes here. I fire a shot, don't necessarily get any critical damage on him, and the teammate gets the assist. Good job on that one, Churchill. Saving my life. I wouldn't say this vehicle is the most, I guess, anti R3 T20. Although, I'm pretty sure that battle ratings subsequent to this particular vehicle will be flooded with EBRs, so there might be a bit of an EBR counter war going on within the players. Now, we're pulling back. Justin has called out a couple of other targets. He's nailed himself a KV-1. I think we've just nailed the whole entire squad between two of us. Raf has been sort of in a supporting role. We're going to go push up around the road. Now, interesting thing. This thing has a range of 700 kilometers or 430 miles. And it doesn't necessarily have the most fuel-efficient engine. <laughs> it, it basically does 50 litres per 100 kilometres. Yeah, not great for an armoured car, but still impressive for the technology at the time. Now, it was built, basically, in the early days. And here we go. Goodbye, Panzer IV. And now we push on. But I am driving backwards, and these were produced from 1951 to 1960. Essentially, they built 1,179 of these vehicles, which is utterly fantastic. Now, see how long gun dunks the shell. Manages to knock out my gun. Justin has to, had to come to the rescue. The beautiful bastard has actually come and saved me, and now he's going to turn around. 234 up in the hill there. We thought that was an enemy for a second. It scared both of us. But didn't expect the Chiha long gun to be on that corner, though. It was quite interesting. We were hearing other vehicles, but essentially that wasn't necessarily the, the case. Do you like Justin's teddy bear on the top of his tank? I think it's absolutely adorable. We're both running the on-air sign, which only content creators can get. If you've ever wondered what that is, that's a little a decoration item that we can apply to our vehicles. Which tells everyone that we're special entitled fucks that, <laughs> I suppose, get access to vehicles early. Regardless on your opinion on that particular thing, I think it's fantastic to get content out early for you guys. That way we can provide you with information on what is good and what isn't. And I suppose that's really the uh, mainstay from this. As to why this is an event vehicle, considering 1,179 of them were produced, I don't necessarily know. There were various different variants, and I quite like this vehicle. It, I've always had a fascination with French armoured cars, and I was wondering when the EBR would come to War Thunder at some point in time. Now, it was replaced. The direct successor was the AMX-10 RC. We already have that game, in-game, I should say. And the AML-90, which we already do also have in-game, which was fantastic. But we also have the other variant, which I believe was a pre-war uh, MD-178 as well. So there's a full line of armoured cars. This really just needed to fit in between. So it perplexes me that they put this as an event vehicle. Hopefully they give another variant uh, to the French tech tree at some point. And I mean, the vehicle is rather successful for an armoured car of its time. Essentially, you know, France, Germany, Indonesia, Morocco, Portugal and Tunisia use these vehicles. I think, I know, I, I, just, I, just, I just like the look of it. It's, it's gnarly. It's such a shame that this, the automatic suspension doesn't necessarily work, or at least the, the hydraulic suspension for the main uh, attraction wheels that are in the center here. Being an eight-wheeled monster, this thing can do some epic things. And it looks kind of funky, and I like that. Now, Justin just said to me in comms that this thing can phase through buildings. Yeah, as you can see here, the only thing that's really stopping that is really the turret. But other than that, the hull can actually probably fit through the whole entire, <laughs> I guess... I can fit through the whole entire building. Anyway, we've spotted a target. It's a Panzer IV. Justin's going, oh no! And, well, blammo. We've got a kill assist on that one. Just because, you know, we can. Now, there's a 251 over here. The new flank barge thing. It does knock out Justin. Unfortunately, I don't necessarily get a shot. I had to pull back and dunk my shot, basically, on the fact that I didn't have the elevation to really annoy this particular vehicle. But, suffice to say that we're nearly at the end of this particular round here. I do manage to go and kill that 251 uh, later on. That's the new 15 centimeter German thing, which I won't be doing a video on, but, uh, you know, that's that. And there is a whole knee right here. Now, I didn't get to kill the whole entire crew in the first shot here. Suffice to say that, well, it wasn't necessarily the greatest, and there we go. We killed that one. Well, on to the next match. Right, rolling around, we've spawned at the opposite end of the map this time. Single cap uh, have gone to three caps instead. Now, Justin's in front, Raf is following behind, we're just sort of going along. And Raf is like, oh, we'll tell you what the BR is. And I was like, ah, oh, no, I'm going to crash into the back of you, buddy. So keep moving, don't stop moving, there's artillery. Justin does get hit quite a bit there. Poor lad. And we're going to push up. Already I can see a tank on the left there. He dunks the shot, misses us, we're going to push forward. And we're going to go to the next hidey hole. Hopefully we can nail this guy in the rear. 
Now, there are a few tanks we could have easily taken a shot at the one that was moving. We didn't. We went for the one that was stationary. He can't see us. We're going to nail him. And goodbye, German T-34. There was another one somewhere around there. Looks like there was a P-40 that just got killed. So, an Italian boy by Justin. This game is going to be fantastic. I'll tell you this much. And running around on these sort of close quarter maps, penetration is no problem. And certainly not sitting in the middle of the open like I'm doing, being a massive dill. As you can see here, I'm sort of just sitting in the open here. Not exactly the greatest position. If one of those flak 251s comes around the corner. I'm not having you kill me again. <laughs> R3 T20s and those things are an absolute plague to this machine. 20 millimeters of armor is not exactly the greatest thing to have either. And we're just going to hang around here. Now, I haven't spotted it yet, but uh, there is another vehicle coming around that, that corner. And there will be a few other things. So I'm just holding this position, waiting for a few targets to appear. There it is, T-34. Goodbye. That is the third kill. Shadow Strike times three. That is when a sneaky M10 thinks he's going on a holiday. Look, he's off to France. Well, not anymore. My angry baguette is on to you, Mr. M10. Goodbye. Go back to the hangar. That's okay. There's another vehicle coming around that corner. I'm just going to sneak around this time. See you later. A couple of the friendlies are killing those vehicles I already have. And Justin screams, Panzer 4 F2. And I go, yep, sure. Just taking care of that for you, buddy. And as you can see here, it's doing fantastically well. I know, professional time is five already. And the game's sort of just really begun. That's right. Time to go and sit in the cap circle. I need some more ammunition. I'm getting low on a bit of shells with 13 rounds left. That's not exactly the greatest. And we're going to help him repair. Now, I will try out driving the vehicle backwards for a little bit when artillery comes raining in on top of us. This is the bane of this particular vehicle. So you can see, my road wheels have now been taken out. Chaffee's rolling around at the back there. So now I have to repair, and then we'll have to do it all over again. We've got two cap points. Enemy team isn't necessarily pushing too hard. But again, waiting for the repair. And then I've got to get help Justin repair. And then artillery comes in and knocks out absolutely everything. The other thing you have to really watch for is the top deck armor, or at least on the, the, the top of the vehicle, is really, really quite thin. So if you're getting attacked by aircraft, it is best that you try and avoid and hide as much as possible. Which again, can be a bit of a pain. But as you can see here, more artillery coming in is probably going to nail us. I am driving backwards right now. You can tell which way is front from back by looking at the headlights. There are two headlights on the front and there is one on the rear, as I said in the intro. But this thing moves at the same speed as it does forwards, so there is no real risk of getting completely nailed here. And uh, Justin's like, there's a tank over here somewhere. It's like, oh, there's a bomb. Stuka's coming in, scared the living daylights out of me. But so far, what do I like about this vehicle? Mobility. Auto reloaded to a degree, or at least ready ammunition racks to use. I'm not entirely sure on the terminology for this one. The road wheels are fantastic, and the steering circle is also fantastic. Now, I was considering going back towards B, but uh, we let the other guy go do it. We take care of the front-facing enemies and opposing things. Turn back around here, Justin's like, oh, I've got an idea, I can hear some tanks already with his eagle ear of his. Raph is somewhere on the other side of the map, I don't believe I see him anywhere. He's capturing A at this point in time. The cohesion between Raph and, and Justin wasn't necessarily there. But Justin has spotted a Panzer IV. And when I go to go get the shot, he has basically taken it. That's okay. Doesn't necessarily matter. He's already spotted another uh, vehicle coming up towards us. I can't hear them at all. So surprise, surprise, I'm using Justin's ears to my advantage. Which I suppose is a good thing. If your teammate can hear a vehicle and, and it has effective communication like we had, then it's fantastic. As you can see, he kills a T-34E. Now, just when I start progressing the hill, there is another vehicle. And right through those bushes there, you see that? That's another T-34. Knocked out his driver. He has no idea we're here. He's turning the turret towards us. Won't get too far there, my dude. Goodbye, Chinese T-34. Go back to the hangar with you. Nets us our sixth kill. And we're going to get some more uh, just up ahead as well. So let's cut forward as I cut across this hi uh, for hill here. When we're sitting in the direct open. As Justin and I are now going to go push the spawn just a little bit. Pack wagon, goodbye. And then there is a stug that's sitting in that bush up there. He has no idea what hit him. So I'm going to mark him for the team and then I'm going to push forward. So we can get some traction going. As you see on the slope, this thing is a little bit of a struggle bus. But again, they're like, where, where is the stug? Oh, I've got him. You know, just fire directly through a tree. Boom. <laughs> there is the eighth kill. And let's see, can we get a ninth kill before the end of this match? Probably not. 
we're just finishing off everybody while we can. I get that they're going to lose, but uh, holy damn. So, what are my closing thoughts while this match winds down? I think the vehicle is fantastic. I do feel that its battle rating will get changed and go up. Initially, it was 3.7 battle rating. They've decided to put that up to 4.3. I do think it could say 5.0 or 5.3 easily. With this kind of gun, I don't necessarily think we'll be able to penetrate those massive targets. Now, I do think the vehicle will be spammed to living hell. It will be another version of the R320 when this thing comes out to the regular folks in about 14 days. Doesn't matter, we won this one. And in terms of effective cost for what you're actually grinding for, or if, even if you're paying for it, I think it's worth it in the long run. This vehicle is incredibly capable, even in, I guess, the most mundane situations. So there you go, nine kills. Sorry, eight kills, two assists, a couple of critical hits, and a bunch of other stuff there. I will leave a link to Justin and Raf in the description down below. But until next time, my name is Ash. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio.